In the second video, I'm going to show you how the discrete Fourier transform can be applied to images. In order to do that, we need the discrete Fourier transform in 2D as given by this equation. In the equation, you can see the f of x and y as the function representing an image with size m by n. I also have the complex exponential here. In the complex exponential is almost the same as in the 1D case, but now, because I have two variables, I have x and y in the equation, and also u and v, which are the, the frequencies in the two directions, also m and n, as a result of the resolution of the image. As in the 1D case, we must evaluate the equation for every value of u and v. So I'll evaluate the frequencies from 1 to m minus 1 in one direction, and from 1 to n minus 1 in the other direction. The inverse discrete Fourier transform is important because I can go to the Fourier domain, perform some kind of filtering, or I can change the, the coefficients in the Fourier domain, and then go back to the space domain of the image. Um, and th this will allow me to filter and to process images much more efficiently. In this case, the only difference here is that I don't have the minus sign. Also, I have to evaluate it for x and y from 0 to n minus 1, from 0 to m minus 1. I can write the DFT 2D also in its polar form, as we already seen for the 1D case. Also, I can compute the magnitude, which is called often the Fourier spectrum, and the phase angle, similarly. The power spectrum, which is the magnitude squared, is often used to visualize. There are some important things here that I, I, you can notice. For example, the first term for the Fourier transform is f, in which u is zero and v is also zero. Because both are zero and e power of zero is one, it will give me a a term that is proportional to the sum of all values of x and y, normalize it by 1 over square root of mn. Another important property is that the Fourier spectrum of a real function is even, symmetric with respect to the origin, and the phase angle is odd. In this case, I'm just showing you the magnitudes. It gives me a map of the amplitudes of each frequency in different directions. In order to make it better to visualize, we usually reposition the quadrants by flipping it and showing in the center of the image low frequencies, whereas in the corners or far from the center, I'm, I'm going to show just the high frequencies. In this operation, we call it FFT shift. Also, to visualize, we often apply the logarithm function to increase the dynamic range of frequencies with a small amplitude. In Another important property of the Fourier transform is that it is invariant to translation. So I can have an object here and translate it. It will give me the same Fourier transform, but it's not invariant to rotation because see that in this case, the way that the frequencies changes over the space also change. In here, it doesn't matter the position of the object, the, frequent, the, the values of intensities will change in the same pattern, but here it doesn't happen that way. We have a diagonal pattern. In here, we have a, a vertical pattern of changes in frequencies. But even if I, I change the, the object, so I split the object in two, it is like a translation, so it also is invariant to this type of transformation. After performing a discrete Fourier transform and shifting the quadrants. What I have is a visualization when I visualize the magnitudes, which gives me how much we have of lower frequencies in the center and higher frequencies uh, as I go further from the center. I can represent convolutions in the Fourier domain as products. This is a result of the convolution theorem in which we start from a circular convolution in 2D, given by this equation, we then can get this result. 
performing a convolution in the space is the same as computing a product in the Fourier domain and, and inverting the result. Similarly, product on space domain is equivalent of performing a convolution in the Fourier domain and inverting the result. And here the F and H are image and filter in the space domain and capital F, capital H are image and filter in the Fourier domain. Because of that I can filter in the frequency domain by applying a multiplication and inverting the result. There are different types of filters that I can use in the, in the frequency domain. The most common ones are related to suppress some parts of the, the Fourier spectrum. For example, the low pass filter allow the low frequencies to pass and retains higher frequencies. In this case, if I multiply this filter by the FFT of uh, an image, I can see that I will, I will multiply by 1, which is uh, here represented by the white color, just the lower frequencies. For the higher frequencies, I'm just multiplying it by 0. The high pass filter works similarly, but it, it is the complement of the low pass filter. It removes lower frequencies while allowing to pass higher frequencies. I can also have a band pass filter which selects a range of frequencies to be kept while removing the other, uh, the other frequencies that are not within this range and a band stop filter which selects a range of frequencies to be removed. We show an example of a high pass filter. You can see that by removing the lower frequencies I lost all the information related to flat regions and I retain only those information related to the transitions between intensities. In the case of the low pass filter is the other way around so I lose information about the transition so it, it gives me a blurred version of the image while retaining the information on of the flat regions including the color. An application of a band stop filter is when I want to remove pattern that appears on the image and it is it, it can be seen clearly in the Fourier spectrum. I can see there is a pattern in the Fourier domain. So I can design a band stop filter to remove just those frequencies. As a result I will have an image that has this uh, interference reduce it. I'm going to use OpenCV, the, the method that computes the DFT for images is CV2. DFT. I just have to pass the image that I want. It's usually uh, converted to a float point number in order to avoid problems with numerical approximations. And I can also enforce it to be a complex output. Here I'm computing the power spectrum by getting the first channel of the image, which is the channel 0 which is the real part, and the, fur in the, the channel 1, which is the imaginary part. I compute then the magnitude by giving as input the real and imaginary parts, get the absolute value of it, and then square it. Those lines here I'm, I are just showing the results of a visualization of the power spectrum by using a logarithm function, also a version showing the power spectrum but now it is shifted. In order to shift the DFT I can use the numpy function FFT.FFTShift. I'm also going to produce a filter, a low pass filter. I will get the image size or resolution, find the middle point for the rows, find the middle point for the columns, I will build two masks. The first mask is a low pass filter and the second one is a band stop. Here the low pass filter is constructed by getting an image or, or a matrix that is have zeros all over the, the matrix and changing it to one just on the middle point minus 100 and plus 100. And the band stop filter is given by an input image and then rescale it to 0, 1. Because it is given by an input image, the input image is, represents uh, the black pixel as 0 and white pixel as 
255 and I'm dividing it by 255 to make it 0, 01, a binary mask. Finally, I'm performing a FFT on the transformed image and then filtering the image using the masks. One is the low pass and the other is the bend stop. In order to visualize, I create the power of the filtered images and show the final result. Because I, I, I shifted the images in order to filter them, I have to invert the FFT shift and then invert, uh, compute the inverse. Finally, to make sure that the result is a real value, I compute the magnitude. This is because numerical errors can make the result to be a complex number. So I, I often have very small imaginary part as a result of uh, uh, numerical errors of the algorithm. So I just to make sure that I, I have a result, a real image, and finally I show the result. I will give you as an example two cases. The first example is an image of the bird with a diagonal line interference. Here I have the FFT power spectrum without the shift and here after shift you can see that it's much easier to see here the lower frequencies and the high frequencies. The analysis is much easier. I'm also showing you the filters that I'm going to use. The first one is, the, is, is a low pass filter because it retains just the lower frequencies and cancel the higher frequencies. The resulting Fourier spectrum is like this. And the band stop filter will cancel out just those frequencies related to the interference pattern resulting in this Fourier spectrum. The low pass filter doesn't give you much nicer results because it is not the case that I don't need the low pass filter but in the case of the band stop filter it improves a lot the, the visualiz visualization of this image. On the other hand I have another image which is a noisy image. This image here is corrupted by noise and noise is often concentrated on the higher frequencies. So similarly I have uh, sh I, I show you here the, the, the two types of filters and here the result is much better for the low pass filter than for the band stop filter. So it makes sense because now I'm not I don't, don't want to remove a specific frequency that is causing an interference. I'm actually trying to remove noise which is concentrated on higher frequencies and this gives me much a much better result. So this is the summary of the uh, discrete Fourier transform in 2D applied to images more in particular in filtering images in the Fourier domain and performing an inverse transform. I hope that will clarify important points in this topic. See you next time.